this evening, turn to the book of Matthew 26. Matthew 26, we're going to be looking at verse 60 through 68. Matthew 26. How many of you here tonight have ever had someone come up to you and ask you, for example, what you think about a person, particular person or a particular thing or something along that line? How many of you ever had somebody ask you that? Okay. Uh, basically, what they wanted was your opinion. They wanted to get a, an approval from you. I, I, I've had people come to me as a pastor and they'll say, uh, preacher, what do you think about this? And if it's something along the biblical line, I'll say, um, well, what's the Bible have to say? Because I've had some come to me and think that it's all right to do a certain thing. And I know it's wrong, and they know it's wrong. But if they seem, if they can get the approval from the preacher, it's okay. No, folks, the approval must come from God. Boy, man, we're getting weak all the time. I bet got a sore throat and the cold, okay? Uh, we've got to get God's opinion on something. What do you think of that person? Or what do you think about this particular subject? Or so forth. When it all said and done, it's what God has to say. See? That's the key right there. I want you to look here at Matthew 26, and we're going to go back uh, to chapter 22 in just a minute. But uh, we here we have the high priests and religious leaders and some of those who have become enemies of the Lord. And uh, they're, 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 they're trying to get Jesus uh, to uh, admit that he's wrong and he's not wrong. And they, they want the people to believe otherwise what Scripture really says. But look here, if you would, at verse number 60 uh, of Matthew 26. It begins, says, But found none, yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, This fellow said, I'm able to destroy the temple of God. Of course, they were referring to Christ. And to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witnesses uh, against thee? But Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tellest, will thou be the Christ, the Son of God? Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, He's guilty of death. Look at verse 67 and 68. Then did they spit on his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of the hands, saying, Prophesy unto us. Read the rest of the verse with me. Thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? Even the very words, when it came down to find out, they had to admit that he was a Christ. You see, a lot of people want an answer, but they don't want to always accept the truth. Now, that's what I want to share with you tonight. What do you really think? What do you think about the Christ? What do you really think? Well, I want to tell you something. It's not really what we think. It's what God's Word says that we ought to receive. See? So I want us to have a word of prayer, and I want to share this with you this evening. Father in heaven, I ask you to take your word tonight. We want to have the answer from the Word of God concerning what think ye of Christ. And I pray that you would take and help each one of us to really get down in our hearts that we see what we really believe based upon the Word of God. I pray our hearts will be warmed and drawn closer to you because of the Word of God tonight. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you for your word that's truth. And we can know the truth. So we pray you would take your, uh, let your Holy Spirit teach us here tonight and help each one of us to have our hearts and minds illuminated by the Word of God. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Turn back to chapter 22, if you would, please. And look at verse number 41. And 
And let's read the two verses together, if you would, please. Verse 41. All right, everyone together. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They saith unto him, The son of David. Now, that is an answer right there, which is 100% correct. Because the Bible teaches it. That is what we have to go on. And I began to think about that this week. And uh, the, these high, the high priests, these religious leaders should have known everything about Christ because they were adverse in the Old Testament scriptures concerning him. Now, we mentioned one of those things this morning, and that was where he was to be born, the location. In Micah 5, 2, the prophet says that he would be born in Bethlehem. You see, God's Word has the answer, but they ignored the Word. Isn't it like some of us sometimes, well, I know what the Bible says, but I, I want to do this. Come on. Am I right? We do what we want to do. We think the way we want to think. But it's not always the right thing. It's not always the truth. And I began to think about that, and I thought about witnesses in the Bible in regards to the person of Christ. What think ye of Christ? It says here in these verses. Then it goes over to chapter 26. It says, What think ye? They answered and said, He's guilty of death. For what reason? What had he done? He had told the truth about himself. But let's push that on the back burner for a few seconds. And let's go to Scripture. And let's look at two of the other persons of the Godhead. And let's see what they say. Number one, let's ask the Heavenly Father, what does he think of Christ? And here's what he says. And the a voice from heaven in Matthew 3, 17 says, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. In John 16, he talks about his own son. For God so loved the world that he gave. He says, this is the person that I gave so he could come in the world and die for our sins. In 2 Peter 1, 17, For he received from God the Father honor and praise, Peter said, and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. The father gave witness of his son. In uh, the Bible, we find about the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in Matthew 3, 16, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went uh, uh, up straight, uh, straightway up out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, lighting up on him. He is the highest of the high, the Bible tells us there in the book of Luke chapter 4. And if I were to ask others tonight, and I'm going to do that, out through Scripture, we have different individuals that talked about this person of Christ and who he was. Who is this person? What is it about him that we need to understand? What we need to know about him? I don't know about you, but I believe it's right for us to ask the question. What think ye of Christ? And I began to think about that, and I, I went to the fact of the fa uh, uh, in the scriptures, what the Bible says about him personally, that he was a great preacher. As he stood on the mountainside and preached, as he stood by the Sea of Galilee and he preached the Word of God, people were astonished. People understood what he was saying about himself and about his Heavenly Father. I think of the fact that he drew the crowds to him, and he healed the sick, and he raised the dead. No man spake like this man, the Bible tells us. He was the Son of God. Then I go back to the Old Testament, starting with a man by the name of Abraham, and you know Abraham well. And the Bible tells us in John 8, 56, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Abraham gave testimony of the fact of Christ. He met him at the tent door there and communed with him. And friend, God always gives proof. And he gave proof through this great man, Abraham. But let's go to the second one. Let's go to Cephas. Let him stand up and give testimony about Christ. 
And there we find in Scripture that uh, he says, I, I find no fault in him. He's not guilty. He's the Son of God. And you see, a lot of people won't accept that. They accept what they want to accept and refuse that which they want to refuse. We go to a man, another man by the name of Pilate. And he becomes a witness for Christ. And Pilate, this man brought, was, uh, Jesus was brought before him and examined. And he said, I find no fault in him. And you would think that the fact that people would see that these men examined Jesus to the nth degree. Uh, we only find a, a small about, amount of the judgment there by these men. But they found no fault in him. He was scrutinized probably for hours in regards to who he was. But he was the son of God. How about the man named Judas Iscariot? He kissed Jesus and called him his friend. Jesus called him his friend. He walked and talked with Jesus upon the, uh, on the, uh, uh, by the Sea of Galilee, talked and walked with Jesus there in and out of Jerusalem and various other locations. He knew what Jesus did. He saw the miracles. He saw what Jesus could do that no other man could do. Have you read in Scripture, did anybody else raise anybody from the dead? Yes. Who? Elijah? Elisha? Yes, but not them, but God. If Jesus touched and healed the sick and raised the dead. But wait a minute. Go to the thief on the cross and ask what he thought of him. And of course, one of them railed on him. He said, if thou be the Christ, deliver yourself in us. And of course, the other one turns and says, we deserve what we're getting. We deserve our punishment. But this man, he's done nothing wrong. And he says, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. There, the thief on the cross recognized who Jesus was. He gave witness of his greatness and his power. If you were to take and you would go to the devils tonight. And you would ask them, who is this? They would say, Jesus, thy son of the most high God. They believed in Christ, the Son of God. But how in our day and time people reject the fact that Jesus is the Son of God? We have denominations around this country, around this world, that deny that Jesus is the very Son of God or God himself manifested in the flesh. They say he's a great man. He's a great prophet. But he's not the Son of God. But they reject the truth. They reject. Uh, you have some denominations. They take John chapter 1 and they call him just a God, small g. Not God himself. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and all things were created. Jesus, the Son of God. Then we take and we come to uh, his friends. And they begin to say, well, I'll tell you what I believe about him. See that man coming down the road? Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Who was that? John the Baptist, wasn't it? John the Baptist, who was a witness, was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. He says, I'll tell you who he was. He is the one that came to the world to save sinners. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And of course, Peter made that same, same statement in regards to Jesus Christ. You see, who is he? What do you think about Christ tonight? Let me ask you a question. Do you believe that Jesus can do anything for your life tonight? He can do anything but fail. Can I hear an amen? He can do anything but fail because of the fact of who he is. And so you and I can believe it too. Well, let's go somewhere else. We've talked about individuals. And only a few, if we were to skim all the way through the Bible from the beginning there to the end, we find many others who could give testimony of the fact of who Jesus really was. But let's go to Scripture and see what Scripture says tonight. Take your Bible and turn over to the book of John chapter 5 with me, would you please? John chapter 5. 
Now, don't lose your place because we're going to come back to the book of Matthew there in just a few minutes. But in John chapter 5 and verse 39. Now I want you to read this out loud with me, if you would, please. John 5, 39. Here we go. Search the what? Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. Read it out loud. And they are they which testify of me. What do the Scriptures say about Christ? Well, if you start in the Old Testament and you go work up, you find out the Bible teaches over and over and over again. He's altogether the lovely one. He's the Prince of Peace. Uh, he is the uh, uh, Emmanuel. He's the Son of God. He's the Eternal One. I mean, Isaiah gave great testimony of Jesus Christ. He's a virgin-born Son of God by Mary. You see, scriptures testify over and over and over again. They testify of the fact that he is the Christ. He's the anointed one. They testify of the fact that he would be crucified. And the Bible tells us he was crucified. He, was, he died for our sins, according to scriptures. He was buried and he rose again the third day. Do you really believe that tonight? Do you believe it? Amen. Why? Because the Bible says so. And if you don't believe the Bible, you call God a liar because this is the very Word of God. This is the Word of God. This is the spoken Word of God. God gave it to you and me. He, we call it, it's God breathed. And I've illustrated that before here uh, in, in this congregation. How it's God breathed. It's God's Word. And if we don't believe those things about what the Bible teaches, we're calling God a liar because this is the Word of God He gave to testify of the Son of God. Look back there again at John 5, 39. He says, look, search the Scriptures. That's the problem. People don't want to look in the Bible and see the answer. Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. The scriptures tell us he is going to be the conqueror when he comes back. But he's already a conqueror. He conquered death, didn't he? He conquered death. But he's going to be a conqueror one of these days when he stands upon the Mount of Olives. And he's going to take and come back one again, again one of these days. Take your Bible and turn over to the book of 2 Timothy, would you please? We have a man by the name of Paul that gives testimony of the facts, fact of what he thinks of Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Look down to verse number 12. Here's what Paul thinks about Christ. Read it out loud with me, if you would, please. Verse number 12 of 2 Timothy 1. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I believed, and am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. You see, he is the truth. He is the way. And he's the life, as John said. You and I are to accept that by faith because there's no other way to heaven. Well, wait a minute. He is also Lord of Lords. All men ought to think of Christ tonight. What think ye of Christ? Do you really believe... Now, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm testing you a little bit tonight. Do you really believe that Christ can forgive sin? Amen. If you don't believe, he can. If you don't believe that he is the I am, he said you'll die in your sin. Is it important for us to think right about Christ? You see, that will be the difference between heaven and hell. That will be the difference in your life in regards to the fact that he's your Savior or not. Is he your Savior? Well, let me go a little bit further as a Christian because I would assume everybody mostly here tonight knows Jesus Christ personally as a Savior. But I want to tell you something. Fifty-some years ago, I sat back in a pew. I read my Bible. I went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, many times had to walk, and the church was eight miles away. I'd, you know, do this, because I didn't have a way to get to church. And I was unsaved. 
I did not know Christ. I was religious, but I was lost. But that night, February, th uh, February 17th, 1963, when I sat in that pew, I came to realize I was a lost sinner, and Jesus Christ became real that night. He became my Savior, and I believed on Him. But wait a minute. What is Christ to you tonight? Now think about this. Is He a very present help in a time of trouble? Huh? When you have problems and trouble and so forth, do you go to Him, as uh, Peter said in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth, for you. Would you quote that with me again? 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Is he that to you tonight? What do you think about Christ when you have problems, when you have troubles, when you have heartache? Well, take your Bible and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm glad he, and I was thinking about this yesterday, and I did not give the scripture uh, yesterday at Brother Shafter uh, Reisner's uh, service. But I was thinking about here, in uh, Second, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 1, I want you to look at verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God which is in Corinth, with all the saints which are in Achaia. Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Who comfort us, come, read verse 4 with me out loud, would you please? Who comfort us all in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort where we ourselves are comforted of God. But here are the verses, here's the verse I want you to get a hold of tonight. Look at it. Verse number 5. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also, read it with me, aboundeth by Christ. Your consolation, your comfort, when we're going through difficulties and problems and so forth, is to come from Christ. Why? He's a very present help in the time of trouble. Amen? A very present help in the time of trouble. But look at the rest of the verse there. He says, to our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Folks, he is a very present help in the time of trouble. He's your comfort in the hour of grief and loneliness. But here's one I like. Is Christ your companion on a daily basis? Is he like the songwriter wrote, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own? Is that how you feel about Christ? Do you think of him daily as walking by your side? I do. I think about the fact when he was in the garden there with Adam and Eve and he walked with them in the cool of the day. And they had that fellowship and they, uh, they talked with one another and he taught them in regards to their life and things they were to teach their children. You see, that is how I feel about Christ. He's with me. I, I, I never worry about where to go, uh, uh, you know, uh, when I travel. I never worry about that. I used to. When I get my car, man, I, 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 well, I hope I don't have a wreck. I'm glad the Lord's with us wherever we go. I'm glad for Hebrews 13, 5, he says, I will never, say it with me, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Christ is with us. But how do you feel about Christ? What do you think about Christ in his promise that he would be with you? No matter where you go, you can depend upon him. And he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Amen? I mean, I, I got wonderful brothers. I appreciate my brothers. But I want to tell you, sometimes my brothers can't always be when I be there when I need somebody. But Jesus is there. 
He's there to help us, to comfort and cheer just when we need him most. So, is he your comfort tonight? Is he your constant companion? What do you really think about Christ? Let's go back to the book of Matthew 26. Look there, if you would, please. In verse number 65 down through 68. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? Then they, they answered and said, He is guilty of death. Now I'm getting to something here tonight. Here were these ones that stood there with the high priest. And he said, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need have we witnessed? Behold, now you have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? He was putting them on the spot. They, he said, look, what do you think about Christ? Don't you think he blasphemed? There were probably those who were there in that crowd. They knew that Jesus had blasphemed. He told the truth. But they failed to do something very important. And that is to stand up for Christ. Do you think enough of Jesus to stand up for him tonight? I mean, when you stand around people and they begin to curse or something like that, do you stand up for Christ? Or do you just go on and let people talk about Jesus in a wrong way? Use his name in vain. And it's easy to do because we're human. But if Jesus is walking with us, we ought to defend him. I mean, look, Margaret, how would you feel about your husband if somebody stood around and cursed at you and he did nothing? What about us when people curse and use the name of Jesus in vain? Why aren't we standing up for him? What think you of Christ? Is he your ever companion? Is he your savior? Is he one that you would stand up for and defend? You're going to have to do that. One of these days, somebody's going to say, look, if you believe in Jesus Christ, we're going to put you to death. How are you going to respond? How are you going to act? What are you going to say? You see, what think ye of Christ? Think ye? They answered and said, He's guilty of death. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palm of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? You see, you and I are to stand up for Jesus. Do you really think he is the Son of God? Do you really believe he is the Savior? Do you really believe he is God manifested in the flesh? That means we've got to take a stand. That means that we, regardless of who it is, if it be your closest friend, you say, wait a minute. That's my Savior. Years ago, and I, I might have told this illustration here, I was at a football game at the stadium there in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. And uh, I had sat down, and there were some guys that came up and sat next to me. And I mean, these guys were not little guys. And I, I, I never was too big, okay? But I, I was uh, 135 pounds soaking wet. And here's these guys. They begin to use the Lord's name in vain. And I turned to them, and I said... Excuse me. That's my Savior. That's my Lord. I appreciate you not using his name in vain. And I thought this one guy, I mean, he was a big guy. I thought he was going to pulverize me. But you know what? He said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You stand up for the Lord. Why? Because, folks, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. And we as Christians need to take a stand. Will it be at work? Let me ask you a question. If your boss would confront you with the fact of something like this, how would you respond to him? Would you stand up for the Lord? Huh? 
or anyone else. What if it's a policeman? Now, not that we should have a wrong attitude towards policemen. I think we ought, to, we ought to take and defend our policemen. But if I had a policeman tonight begin to curse and use God's name in vain, I want to tell you something. I tell him, look, sir, I appreciate you as an individual, but you just use my Lord's name in vain. And we ought to stand up for him. Huh? That's what you and I need to do. Here were these ones here. They didn't stand up for Jesus. But what happened? They joined the crowd. And verse 67 says, Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? See, Jesus is not just a magic man. He is the Son of God. He's God's Son. Listen to me who came and paid the price for you and me. Because the Bible clearly says this in Romans 5, 8, but God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Can you and I do less than our best in standing up for the Lord and saying, he is the Son of God. He's my Savior. He's my Lord. And stand up for the Lord. Now let me ask you tonight. What think you? What think ye of Christ? Is he your Savior? Is he your constant companion? Is he the one that you go to for comfort? Is he the one that you go to for wisdom? After all, the Bible says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. We can go to Jesus for everything because we know who he is. Amen? He's the Christ, the Son of the living God. And these here denied him. Will you deny him? Or will you depend upon him? Will you trust him? Will you walk with him in fellowship? Will you put him first in your life? That's what I'm trying to get across to you tonight. What is it do you think about Christ? Let's go to the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1, and close with this, would you please? 1 Timothy, chapter 1. Paul said, Timothy, I want you to know something. Chapter 2, instead of 1, chapter 2. And I want you to look at verse 5. And I want you to read it out loud with me, verse 5 and 6, if you would, please. Here we go. For there's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for what? All to be testified in due time. Some of you possibly have some friends that don't believe Jesus is God. Here is the most clear, here's one of the most clearest verse in all Scripture concerning the fact that Christ is God. Verse number five. Read it again with me. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. It not only teaches the fact of his deity, it teaches his humanity there, because Jesus was 100 percent God, yet 100% man and all God's people said well, let's bow our heads in prayer what think ye of Christ I hope that you realize that Christ when he came down to this earth as a little baby took on him human flesh he was no less God by doing that but he came that he might Feel the infirmities that you have and I have. And he could deal with them. And he could be a sym sympathetic high priest, as the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews. So tonight, what think ye of Christ? Our actions speak much louder than our words. Father in heaven, I pray you would take your word tonight and help each one of us that we realize by what we do and by what we say we do 
show what we think of a person called Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, who gave His all that we could have all. I pray tonight if there happened to be someone who walked in this auditorium who is not saved, I pray they'll be saved tonight. I pray if, for every Christian here tonight that they will put Jesus as first place in their life. That he would let, they would let Him rule and reign in their life because He deserves to reign in our life. Father, I pray you take your word and use it for your honor and glory and help me to be obedient to your divine commands. Because the Bible says, if we love, you said, if we love you, we'll keep your commandments. So I pray you touch each one of us tonight that we come to a new commitment. What do we really think about Jesus the Christ? Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me, please?